morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torres. Thanks for tuning us in this morning. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's here across from the Madison High School. This week, talking girls basketball. I actually have somebody live in with me this morning, and it's nice to talk to somebody. I have Sam Terrell, Madison girls basketball coach in. Coach, good morning to you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, it is it is indeed. Uh, <laughs> getting to the end of the season already it's hard to believe and where is the season going oh it's, it's going incredibly fast I think we were just talking a few minutes ago you know sectional draws tomorrow and it it just seems like yesterday we were in the middle of June in the middle of our summer schedule mm -hmm. and, and, and again it's it's a situation where where has the season gone um, you, you're doing conditioning you're trying to get things done and then all of a sudden boom hey we're at the uh, we're at the beginning of the sectional draw and all of a sudden now it's time to go, and it's time to go quick. No, definitely, you know, and I think uh, right now we're, we're paying, you know, the price, or, or not really paying the price, but just uh, the culmination of all our hard work this summer and our weight training class that the girls are in. You know, we've, we've worked all season for, for this upcoming week and uh, our next two weeks, and we'll see what happens with the draw tomorrow, and hopefully we'll get a good draw. You know, you and you you look at the season. It's it's a it's a long season. It starts you know essentially in October when you officially start practice, and and then go into November and December, and and then into January, and then all of a sudden it's sectional time. But it's a long season. It's a long grueling season. Sometimes kids get tired at the end of the season. Oh, definitely. I think you know with the attention spans of kids now, it's it's um, kind of they they say that microwave mentality. I want it now, and, and it's very hard for high school kids um, to see the light at the end of the tunnel you know you work so hard for so long you, you go back and you think about hey we started this whole process June 1st mm -hmm. and we grinded it out all summer and and we get into the school we got the girls in a weightlifting class which um, has really helped our program right. and, and it's slowly starting to see the benefits of that and when these kids are juniors and seniors I think we'll see the big benefit but you know it's every day practice weightlifting you know conditioning whatever you, you're doing with your program but yeah it's it's definitely you get into late january early february and the girls are like oh man uh, but they you know we do have to find a way to stay motivated mm -hmm. keep it fresh keep them energized because you know right now is probably the most important part time of our year with sectional four and 20 a year ago let's, let's go back and reflect on your first season as as a varsity coach at madison four wins Every coach wants more wins and less losses. Sometimes it works that way, but when you're building the program, it's slow steps at a time. Oh, it is. You know, and when you don't have a huge group of seniors or juniors, mm -hmm. and you're relying on freshmen and sophomores, especially with the conference and schedule that we play, it makes things really difficult. Um, you know, we've we've had to place kids in the situations that uh, are not necessarily ready, mm -hmm. uh, that probably should be getting more time on the freshman level or the JV level. But you know, with us not having a, a, a a plethora of seniors or juniors you know we've got to play those young kids and uh, it makes it tough sometimes talk to coaches uh, uh, multiple times about that particular scenario of throwing a kid in when they're not quite ready to advance to that next level and, and most of the times the coaches will try to make that particular scenario work sometimes it doesn't work that way kids take a step backwards but nothing ventured nothing gained well, that's right and I think we've done we've tried to do, or do a good job of you know last year we played kids at least one JV quarter mm -hmm. to give them some success right. you know um, in that versus just going right into varsity and kind of thrown to the wolves and and you know maybe have a little success here and there and and really you know uh, not so much success right away so we gave them that that JV quarter and I think it's helped a lot of the kids uh, this year we've tried to do that when we can uh, but with some of the kids it's I'd hate for a kid to get hurt in in the middle of a JV quarter right. just to give them a little bit of you know success especially when we're really counting on them for the varsity level you uh, again four wins last year you, and you mentioned weightlifting and stuff that you you done during the summer kind of go into some specifics when you got done with the season last year in your mind what did you need to do to build for this year well I think we just need to get tougher mm -hmm. we need to get tougher mentally and physically um, we probably did more 
than I, I usually would like to do in the summer, but our girls just needed that toughness. You know, we spent a lot of time in the weight room, a lot of time on the track, mm -hmm. conditioning. You know, we drove to Indianapolis two, three days a week, played against uh, the Indianapolis schools, um, which was really, really good for us um, to go up there and play with those bigger schools and, and to play the physicality style that they do. Uh, we went to D1 camp where we played about 15, 16 games in mm -hmm. four days, mm -hmm. and it was really, really tough on us uh, mentally and physically, but the girls got through it. We had a great summer uh, and I, I know we got a lot tougher mentally and physically because of it and uh, you can look at our schedule this year. Yeah, we've, we've only won seven. It's more than last year but if you look at the 12 losses that we've had I'd say probably at least nine of them have been in single digits. Mm -hmm. A couple buzzer beaters mm -hmm. beat us, mm -hmm. so it's we've we've dropped our our um, average loss to a, like a negative one versus I think it was 18 last year mm -hmm. on average. So we we've gotten a lot better, even though our record is still a losing record, but it's it's still a lot better than last year. Well, you're you're always as a coach looking for improvement, and sometimes coaches you can't just solely look at a record and think well, your program is successful or right. not. Right, right, definitely, and I think we've gained a lot of respect from a lot of the schools around the, the area and even from Indy and up north that, hey, you know, Madison's young. We've got a huge young roster, but you better come ready to play because they play hard, uh, they play smart, and uh, we're not just a pushover game anymore. Does does it, it girls especially, but does it, does it scare girls when you talk about going in the weight room and, and lifting weights and this? I, I think we, you know, Coach Roney there at school has done a great job of incorporating some new different techniques and different styles that uh, the girls feel that the things that they're doing mm -hmm. is not going to make them big and bulky. Yeah. Um, and, and we've kind of gone on that concept of you're not going to get as big as what you think. You know, if you're not in the weight room every day, you're not taking the protein shakes, you're not doing a lot, you're not going to get as big as what you think. Right. You know, and they've got the mindset now of going through it that's like, hey, we're not as big as what you know you, that, that they would think so they're getting a lot of, a lot of um, self awareness self concept you know or uh, confidence by being a little bit stronger they're not getting beat up and and banged and pushed around like they they have in the past because they've worked really hard in the weight room kids will see success will make them drive a little harder they see success in the weight room should make them drive oh definitely harder. i think the kids too have also realized how much stronger and how much more endurance that they had. You know, you take a look at, uh, we were talking about this the other night, uh, the assistant coaches and me about uh, Hannah Emmel mm -hmm. and the transformation that she's made from her freshman year to her senior year and, you know, working on some post moves. We've, we've put the pad on her and we've really realized how much stronger mm -hmm. she has become from the waist up and the, and the waist down mm -hmm. and the lower body than what she was as a freshman, sophomore, right. and even last year. Mm -hmm. And she can really beat and bang now and, and she doesn't have the injuries uh, that's been a huge thing for us is we've gotten so much stronger uh, mentally and physically that we don't have the injuries because we're, we're not frail we're not weak right and, and you mentioned the track getting up and down the floor there's a lot of running involved and if you're going to play good hard-nosed defense and run a lot of offense maybe not scoring but a lot of offense you got to be in good shape oh definitely you know and I know the girls hated it out there <laughs> <laughs> you know we'd, we'd lift for now and then we'd go to the track and and they probably felt like we were just running them in the ground and and it was it was kind of okay let's see how much we can take how much can we take physically and mentally mm -hmm. get through it so they see hey I got through it you know when they're when they're leaving the parking lot after that they're dead tired they're exhausted you know some may be crying some <laughs> some may have visited the trash can but you know they can at least walk away going hey we made it mm -hmm. we made it through this and there's nothing going to be any tougher than what we just went through <laughs> Coach, you, you mentioned seven wins on the season this year. It's it's an improvement from a year ago, and your coaches are always looking for improvement. We talked about that a minute ago, but you, you've seen the improvement through hard work in the off season, and again, trying to build a program. You're only giving up 41 points a game. You're averaging almost 40 points a game, and it, you don't have to score 80 points to be victorious every every game. No, no, and and I'd like to 
for us to dictate the pace. Uh, it, it makes us more in control than versus another team playing their style. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's really hard for teams, I think, to, to play the style that we want to play, and it causes them a lot of problems. It keeps us in a lot of games uh, with our youth and, and, and stuff. It, it, it helps us slow the game down to where we, we can manipulate what we want to do, mm -hmm. uh, get the shots that we want to get, and uh, puts us in a more successful situation. Offensively, though, it, it is it's tough on a, uh, it's tough on any kid. I don't care what grade it is, but it's tough on on kids to to have to control the ball for multiple time on, on an offensive possession. That nervous factor comes into play. Oh, definitely, and, and, and it has hurt us in some aspects. As far as I think, you know, with the turnover situation, and, and obviously not getting as many shots as probably what we would if we got sure. up and down the floor. But we work really hard every day and, and working at getting a great shot. You know, we can get any shot we want at any right. time. But it, we're we're in the mindset of we want to get a great shot. Um, you know, with with some of the kids we have, we have to put them in certain situations to be successful. Mm -hmm. and, and I always like to say why take a bad shot because it's like a turnover you right. miss it and, and you've wasted a possession because you didn't get the kid that you wanted to shoot or get him in the right spot to get a, a more productive shot and, and even make the shot I talked to a coach several years ago made it a point to me it kind of stuck in my head talk about possessions as you mentioned and, and being a turnover situation but he said we have to approach possessions like it's it's a newborn baby. We, yes. we want to make sure that we take care of it every time. We don't want to haphazardly just throw the ball around. Exactly. You know that's I've said you know similar things like this. You know we want to treat every possession like it's gold. Mm -hmm. Like you know we don't get very many of them, and, and we're going to make it count, and we're going to be very you know direct in what we're trying to do, and, and why not make the the, the defense work? Mm -hmm. You know don't don't just let them stand around and make them move. Make make because it is tiring playing good defense right. and uh, you know it's a lot easier when you have the ball moving it and, and, and looking for a score versus playing defense and trying to keep people from scoring. Yeah, and you, that, that's a great point. It's tiring to play good defense and I think that's why some teams they don't play very much defense. You just go ahead and score. We'll go down and try to score on the other end. Exactly. Round. And it all goes back to being mentally strong and, and getting through that because teams don't want to. They, they want to play defense for about 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, a shot clock, I, I keep telling myself, I hope we never go to a shot clock because I'm going to have to redo a lot of things, you know, to try to get that quick shot. But, right. you know, definitely teams, you know, the teams that we play want to get up and down the floor. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you go back to last year with our sectional game against Greensburg. Greensburg had hated playing that style that we played yeah. and, and I knew that there's no way we could play Greensburg style and we took a chance to, mm -hmm. to do something that no one's ever done against them or, or was successful against them and right. we did a great job for you know two and a half three quarters and you know we fell on the, the end of it there at the end but we had young players and and there's always this year well you look at and I just you kind of brought me back because I did the game up there last year 37 17 was the final but it was extremely close for two and a half quarters. Oh, you know, I think it was two to two after the first quarter. Right. I think we were up 11 10 yeah. at halftime, and right. we were down four. Um, in the third, mm -hmm. um, at the end of the third, going into the fourth, and I think the first three or four minutes of that fourth quarter, it was still a, right. a three to five, six point ball game. I think we had a, about three or four bad possessions there where the ball just didn't sure. bounce our way. We got right. a bad call. They hit a, a big three. You know, Whitaker, you know, she got loose, and, and I always said that, you know, she's going to take a lot of threes. They're going to be deep, but man, she always finds a way to hit one. It's mm -hmm. like a dagger, and right. she did hit that one that put them up double digits mm -hmm. there in that, that fourth quarter. And I was like, okay, now we're really going to have to try right. to play now because you get down 11, you you, you got to start playing. Well, and that and that and kind of hitting back the same thing we've talked about that kind of game plan to hold the ball to make the the defense work. Um, it's, a, it's a different concept for a lot of kids to be put into and to be able to execute it as well as they did. I think it's a, a testament to, to what you were trying to do and you guys as a coaching staff to the players. Well, you know, they bought in. They believed that this was the only way that we had a chance to win and and you know when we all of a sudden it was two to two and then we were up 11 10 and you know they're like hey we're in this game right and 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 you look at some of our games this year and it was kind of that way too we were at bedford we're up six one and they're like hey there's only three quarters to go we're ahead mm -hmm. against the number six or seven team in the 4a next thing you know we're only down six at halftime they're like hey we're in this game mm -hmm. you know four minutes to go it's only a 10 point game 
we're in this game because right. you know ten points is not that you know we can we can yeah. you know re erase that pretty quickly. So, and then you you look at the the confidence factor that a kid has when they when they build to that point, and then the the different mentality that it brings to them. It, it kind of really changes a player when they have that confidence. Oh, definitely. You know the confidence is huge, especially for girls. You know they go out, they get down pretty good in the first couple minutes. They're it's over. Yeah. You know very few kids, even boys or girls, they get down like that. You know, they hang their head, they get that bad body language. It's, it's hard for them to come back. But if we can start off good, get great possessions, get some quality shots, easy shots, mm -hmm. and, and make, make it struggle for the other team, it, it gives those kids some confidence that, hey, we can do this. They don't want to play our style, right. and we're good at our style. Yeah, and, and what we talked before, it's it's that particular style. Nobody plays it a lot anymore. That good, hard-nosed defense, everybody wants to get up and down the floor, and they want to score a lot of points. You talk about playing defense for 15 or 20 seconds, and that's it. It's a different style. It's it's kind of the throwback style, but it's a different style. Definitely, you know, and we've worked really hard on our defense to where, you know, it, it, we make every team really struggle for a shot. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we mix it up. We'll play different defenses, man zones, trap. You know, it just kind of depends on who we're playing, mm -hmm. uh, what they have, and what we need to stop. And, and you know, we, we try to make that old, the Belichick, you know, we're going to take away what the other team's good at. Right. Uh, and we've been pretty successful at that. You know, we do have our limitations because, sure. you know, it, it really still comes down to the Jimmys and Joes. Right. You know, <laughs> if, if I don't have a 6'5 girl and the other yeah. team does, it, it's yeah. going to make it real tough eventually. Right. You know, they're gonna, that's going to wear out. But we, we really make it hard on other teams, I think, to do what they want to do. This team, uh, do they adjust on the fly pretty well? I think so. They're, they're getting better at it um, with, with the youth that we have. They, you know, we work really hard every day in practice, and we try to put them in situations on the fly to, to try to help, you know, educate them, you know, l have them learn what we're trying to do. And, and it does make it hard at times to go on the fly because we sure. are so young right. and they haven't been with me very long. Mm -hmm. uh, but they do. They work really hard and they do a great job of, of, of trying to work and, and do what we want to do. They don't always get it done, but, you know, it's not because of a lack of effort. Sure. Absolutely. Talking with Madison girls basketball coach Sam Terrell. We'll come back to McDonald's in just a minute here on Work. 96.7. Welcome back to Coach's Quarter Life from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. Just a little uh, basketball etiquette from Coach Terrell here this morning. Some things you assume kids know, but sometimes they just don't know. They, they don't. And, and as we were talking about, especially one that they really have a hard time with is if we're taking the ball underneath our basket out mm -hmm. of bounds, the ball can be thrown all the way across half court if it's not touched or even if it's deflected, you don't right. have control over it. You can grab it and come back across. They think that that line, man, once you cross it, <laughs> and, and it yeah. is, once you right. cross it, you can't go back, but you know, there's yeah. different situations that it's you can do that and mm -hmm. they don't understand that or yeah. they don't understand you can cross the three-point line when the ball hits the rim and, right. uh, and there's a lot of learning that some of the, the kids now don't understand. Mm -hmm. And it, you were talking about coast to coast too that brought back some memories as well. <laughs> Definitely yeah we had, we had a couple players last year didn't know you know I'd made a comment guys we can't just keep letting the ball go coast to coast and some of the players are like uh, we don't know what coast to coast means <laughs> and of course they don't want to ask because they don't want to look stupid. Right. You know but like I tell them, it's like, if you don't ask, you don't know. You don't so know. just ask. You know, we might make fun of you for a little bit, <laughs> but, but, you know, we're going to explain as much as we can. You know, we tell them, hey, watch some basketball on TV. Right. Learn. Mm -hmm. Watch what's going on. You know, NBA, college, any, and then there's a lot of high school games now on, right. on, on TV that, hey, just watch, learn, listen to the commentators, yeah. you know, listen to the coaches at halftime because you can pick up a lot of knowledge just from that. In your second season here at Madison, uh, Talk of coaching, anybody that kind of sticks in your mind that you learned a lot of coaching from? Well, I, you know, I've got to learn uh, a lot from a lot of the coaches in the conference, you know, I've become pretty good friends with a lot of them. Mm -hmm. and, and even meeting coaches up at, at the camps, you know, D1 camp, and, sure. and then also talking to a lot of coaches up at Lady Mac this summer, and, and you know, just becoming good friends with them and, and talking some, just basketball with right. them. You know, obviously when we go to the coaches clinic in April, it's a great time to, to listen to some of the coaches, but I think we get a lot as coaches just kind of sitting around the table, just talking mm -hmm. uh, with coaches there, uh, you know, in between the sessions or after the sessions sure. um, but uh, you know any time you know 
any everybody steals everybody's stuff. There's there's nothing new that's happening anymore. Right. Um, and and you do have to tweak some of the stuff that you get from other coaches, mm -hmm. to, you know, because I do feel like in high school you get what you get. Right. And, and you can't always play the style that you want to play because you may not have those those players to play that style. You know, it's not like in college you can recruit say you know I want to be a run and gun pressing team. Well, I can recruit those players right. to, to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, in high school. You know, one year I might have a bunch of kids that can't get up and down the floor, and they may be all six three. Right. And, or, or the, you know, one one grade I might have a team that that's all guards, and we can get up and down the floor. And uh, so, you know, learning and, and doing the different styles and talking to different coaches, you know, hey, what what's worked for you guys in the past? And mm -hmm. I might be able to take some little nuggets from from them and tweak a little bit to mm -hmm. what we have. And it's and it's I, it's nice for coaches to hear kind of some new ideas. Not not every I mean everything's been tried at least one time. But you hear some variations where you can take an adjustment. Oh, definitely. You know, there's not one drill shooting or rebounding that some of us ha haven't done at one point. Uh, you know, I think there was one drill that I had said the wrong name. It was a name that I used to, or we used to call it when I was playing. But right. then they're like, what are you talking about? I was like, oh, that's what we used to call it back in my day when we were doing it. Uh, but it is, you know, coaches may have a little bit of different tidbit of mm -hmm. how they do the same drill and it may actually benefit us and it, and it may not benefit us but I always like to try something different you know because it does keep it more fresh for the kids it, you know if we're if we're doing the same thing every day mm -hmm. same thing every year kids are going to get bored with that so right. you know we've got to do different things every year we've we've started you know over the last couple of years we've we listened to music during practice mm -hmm. uh, it, it does get the kids energized because yeah. it, you know music kids right. love music and sure. and then it also it's it's distracted mm -hmm. you know it makes the kids have to talk because we turn it up loud right so if the kids aren't talking and they don't know what's going on so they've got to talk they've got to communicate they've got to focus when other stuff's going on uh, because we don't play games in a gym with nobody right you know we play in the gym with people playing you yeah. know talking band whatever right. a ton of distractions so we try to simulate that every day in, in practice do you do you guys hit fundamentals on a daily basis oh yeah we we do dribbling passing shooting you know sometimes I, I know they do get tired of it mm -hmm. but it's like you know last time I checked even the pros do that stuff right you know every day you know I, I, I was talking about some of the players that come in you know these pros talk about coming in three four hours ahead of time and then right. doing a full two-hour workout before their game even starts you know some of the you know Kobe yeah. listened to a thing there Kobe Bryant you know he wanted to make four or five hundred jump shots make four or five hundred not yeah. take four or five hundred right. we want to make four or five hundred right you know how many shots did he have to take to make four or five hundred right you know and, and that's before they even play mm -hmm. and and so we've kind of gotten the custom of we come in you know like today our, our first game is at 11 with the freshmen uh, the girls are already there at 915 we're, we're doing a walkthrough we're doing some warm-up we're doing shooting and, and the girls have noticed that hey we do play better when we get a, a good hour workout in right. before we even play and they realize we're not as tired as what we think we would be sure. after an hour workout so it's just the kids learning and, and adjusting to what it really takes to be successful sectional 29 well before we get into that let's look at today you're going to host the Columbus East in a, in a conference game and then you've got North Harrison on Tuesday night. We'll have that one here on WORX. And then Lawrenceburg on Thursday at Lawrenceburg and then at Scottsburg. So finishing out the season, final four games, not a cakewalk. Oh, no, definitely. You know, you look at these next two teams, East today, North Harrison on Tuesday, two really good 4A schools. You know, North Harrison being ranked, mm -hmm. you know, and they've been the 3A state runner-up the last two years. You know, East is no cakewalk. You know, they've got a good record. They're a top 4A team. You know, I know they've probably got votes to be in the top 10. They're coming off a tough loss there on the road to Jennings. I know they're fired up. They're not very happy about losing that game uh, to Jennings. So they're going to come in here pretty pretty hot and yeah. pretty determined to uh, try to bury us and get a get a good win. And then, you know, you've got Lawrenceburg that their record's really good. I think they've only lost a couple games. They're one of the top teams in our sectional. Mm -hmm. And then anytime you go to Scottsburg, I don't care what their record is, you know, Coach Gina Cheatham is not the wingest girls basketball coach in the state of Indiana for nothing. Right. Uh, she's got a couple state titles. Scottsburg is definitely going to be ready. They're going to play hard. They're going to play physical. You know, they don't call the pressure cooker the pressure cooker for nothing. So, right. definitely these next four games, you know, whether we win or lose them, you know, obviously we'd like to win all sure. four. Uh, but I'm just looking for good, solid, good play. Uh, 
and give us some confidence going into to sectional because I think our girls, you know, if we play well and we lose at the end of the day, yeah. I think they're still somewhat okay with that. We can walk right. away going, hey, you know, we, we got beat. But we got beat by a good team, and we played well. We were in the game. We had a few things we need to work on, but it's going to still give us good confidence uh, leading into sectionals. Obviously, if we win all four, right. we're going to be on cloud nine, sure. and, and we're going to have a huge momentum going into sectional. South Dearborn sectional, Greensburg, Lawrenceburg, Batesville, Rushville, Franklin County, South Dearborn, Lawrenceburg, and Greensburg, two best records, but Madison, Batesville, Rushville, Franklin County, South Dearborn, kind of right there all together. So the, the draw is everything. Oh, it, I, I think it is. You know, I've seen Greensburg play really well this summer. I've seen them play really well this year, and I've seen seen them play not so well this this uh, season. And uh-huh. have them get gotten beat by some teams that you're kind of like, hey, you know how they get beat by that team. Right. You know, I think they've had some injuries. They had some kids not playing particularly well right now. So I think depending on the draw, you know, if if you put you know maybe Rushville and Greensburg up in the top bracket and everybody else down at below or mm-hmm. vice versa, right. who knows what can happen? It's, right. it's Indiana basketball. That's yeah. the beauty of it. You just never know. I mean, for three quarters last year, I think we had Greensburg really nervous mm-hmm. last year. It's like, how in the world, Madison, four wins, and, yeah. it, and it's this close of a game. So right. I think anything's possible. And you, and you look at that, and, and the trip to South Dearborn, uh, it's not that long a trip, about an hour up, up to uh, to Dearborn County. So you're going to be playing somewhere that, that is relatively close, not like Rushville, where you have to drive for an hour and a half to get def- there. Definitely. And we've played at South Dearborn this year. We had a great game at South Dearborn. We shot the ball well. The girls seem to feel comfortable in the gym. So, you know, I, I think that's in our favor. Obviously, we don't get to practice there this year because sure. of the, the new rules that they put in place. If you play at the, the site uh, during the school year, you don't you don't get to go practice there. So, But I don't think it's going to cause the, the problem with the girls. I think for the girls, I think if we can get a good draw and they feel comfortable with it, they're going to feel really good about our chances. All right, that's Coach Sam Terrell at Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's here on Madison's Hilltop.